before we dive into setting up Bloodborne on Chat PS4, let's quickly go over the requirements to make sure everything runs smoothly. For Chat PS4 to work, you'll need a system with at least 8GB of VRAM and 16GB of RAM. You can get away with less, but keep in mind you might run into more crashes. Ideally, you'll want an AMD CPU with either an NVIDIA 1600 series or newer or AMD 5000 series. Older GPUs might struggle and for Intel users, make sure you're running the latest drivers to avoid visual glitches. And also, don't forget to download the Qt version of Shout PS4, this one comes with a user interface, while the SDL version doesn't. Uh, you'll also need an exploitable PS4 on firmware 11 or lower along with a physical copy of Bloodborne, which can be dumped using a homebrew tool called Items Flow. For Windows users, you'll need the Microsoft Visual C++ redistributions. The links to Visual C++ redistributions and Chat PS4's GitHub page is mentioned in the description below. Now, if you've tried the latest version of the emulator, you might have noticed that the package installer feature is gone. This makes it harder to install games directly. But don't worry, um, there is a workaround. So we'll start by downloading the version 0.7, the stable one, from GitHub, uh, which still supports the package installer. Uh, once the game is set up, I'll show you how to update the latest version. First, head over to the GitHub page for Shad PS4 and download version 0.7, which is stable and still supports package installation. The newer versions don't support it. Make sure to grab the Windows zip file. Now, as you can see, I have my game files ready. One is the main games pkg file and the other is the updates pkg. Now I'm creating a folder called Bloodborne next to these game files uh, in order to keep things organized. Now we want to extract all the contents from the chat ps4 zip file into the Bloodborne folder. After the extraction you want to create a new folder named games where your chat ps4 games are installed in this case Bloodborne. When we are installing the package files, the contents will be extracted into the games folder. Now open chat PS4 to begin the installation process. In the directory to install games box, select the games folder you just created and repeat the process for the box below it. Next, click on the file tab and select install packages. Locate the PKG files we discussed and select the larger file which is the main game first. The installation might take a few minutes so be patient. The other file is the update file. You'll need to install both of them. Now after the packages are installed, we are going to open the settings menu. Under the general tab, Find the update channel section and set it to nightly releases. Also enable the option to check for updates at startup. Next, go to the graphics tab, select your dedicated graphics driver under graphics device for better performance. Now navigate to the input tab and disable the enable motion controls option. After you're done, click apply and save your settings. Now you want to return to the settings menu and click on check for updates. Wait for the update to complete. Sometimes the loading screen might get stuck but that's normal. Just let it finish. Now let's move on to the next part of the tutorial, enabling patches and cheats. You want to right click on the game title and select cheats slash patches. Under the cheats box, change the repository to Shad PS4 and click on download cheats. Next, under the patches box, 
change the repository again to chat ps4 and download patches now you want to enable these patches one by one skip intro disable chromatic aberration disable motion blur disable depth of field disable http requests and 60 fps patch after you're done click save at this point you can start the game but i recommend using mods to enhance performance they help fix issues like vertex explosion and other graphical problems especially for intel cpus now let's move on to installing mods using a mod manager you might ask uh, why use a mod manager why don't install mods without a mod loader well uh, if you install mods by yourself without a mod manager uh, if you modify your game files there's no way to uninstall the mods or revert your files to how they were originally the mod loader i'm using in this tutorial is the bloodborne launcher and mod manager from nexus mods mod manager for bloodborne is available in the nexus mod website and you can download it for free i'll put the link to this uh, mod launcher in the description below just make sure you download the windows version once it's downloaded open the zip file extract all the files from the zip into the folder where your chat ps4 executable is located you want to copy your chat ps4's directory open bloodborne launcher and select the chat ps4 executable file Next, under the Bloodborne install folder box, click Browse and navigate to the games folder that you created earlier. Select the folder within it that starts with CUS, that's the game folder. That's it, your mod manager is now installed. Next, you'll download the mods and copy them into the mods folder. To open the mods folder, just click on the mods icon. First, we are going to install the mandatory mods. The first one we're going to install is the Vertex Explosion Fix mod, which will get rid of most of the Vertex Explosion. So now you want to go to the mods page in Nexus Mods and go to the file section and download it. Just make sure you choose the generic mod manager version. Now before we get into installing the first mod, we need to understand something beforehand. You see, if you go to the Bloodborne game directory inside the games folder that you created earlier, you'll find a folder called VBD root. The mod manager checks if the folder's name is within the game directory or not. The DVD underline root folder or any subfolders like action, chr, event, face gen, map, menu, and etc. are also recognized by the mod manager. So the mod that you download should contain either the DVD root folder or any of these subfolders. Now that we're in the mods folder, which you opened using the mod icon in the Bloodborne launcher, uh, you can extract the mod files from the zip into this folder. There is another mandatory mod that you should use if you are using a uh, Intel CPU. Now again, the download process is all the same. As you can see, the zip file for this mod contains a DVD root folder which is one of the main folders in the game. Here, because the mod doesn't have a folder named with the specific name, I'm going to copy the mod's name to create a folder with a clear descriptive name so it's easier to remember what this mod does. So I'll create a new folder and name it based on what I just copied. 
Now you'll want to copy the dvd root folder from the zip into this folder. On the side note, you could also directly place the param and sfx folders inside the mod folder before the dvd root. This structure works too. Let's get back to the Bloodborne launcher and see how we can enable these mods. If you click on mod manager, you'll see two boxes, one on the left and one on the right. The left one shows the inactive mods and the right one shows which mods are active. Initially, all mods will be in the inactive mods box. To activate them, select the mod and click activate mod. That's it. Now you can play your game with mods installed. Just remember to open the game via the Bloodborne launcher. Alright, uh, before we finish up, let's talk about performance. If you're on a low-end system or even a mid-range setup like mine, I'm running on a GTX 1660 Ti, you might notice Bloodborne isn't running as smoothly as you'd like. In this case, if you want to make the game perform better, you'll want to install performance mods. The ones that are recommended by uh, most people are as follows. Reduced physics, which changes the cloth physics to different levels, uh, reshade for chat PS4 and FPS boost, and finally Bloodborne enemy ragdoll removal. And that's about it for setting up Bloodborne on chat PS4, including all the performance tweaks you'll need to get it running smoothly. Um, now there are a bunch of gameplay mods out there that can make the experience even more fun or challenging. But I'm gonna skip those for now. If I included them here, this video would be too long and probably kind of boring. So I'll save that for a future one. If this guide helped you out, uh, drop a like, leave a comment with your specs or how it runs for you and make sure to subscribe so you don't miss the next part. Thanks for watching and good luck.